week two of our study, God's Appointment Calendar. This is a very important and exciting week where we studied our Jewish roots. As Christians, we have been grafted into God's family and all of his many promises are ours. All of his sacred appointments we have been invited to. So let's talk some more about the seven feasts of the Lord. Uh, God, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you give us. Uh, thank you that you are a God of yes. order and not chaos that you want to show us things in your word and in our world by the sun, the moon, the stars, the weeks, the months, the years in this world. Um, you've ordered everything and that you have uh, the very best plan for us and that if we just walk in your will, we can be a part of everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, help us to ride the wave and be a part of this time in history in a real and meaningful way. Uh, guide our conversation today yes, and guide our time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we started this week um, with day one and setting appointments, and that really focused on uh, God's original plan for things um, in doing sun, moon, stars, and saying, I'm going to set these divine appointments now at the very beginning of creation. So in his setting of the appointments, and he says, my appointment calendar starts at the first new moon of spring. Um, I found it interesting that the way that you know that it's going to be the first new moon of spring is because of the almond blossoms. I don't know if our almonds blossom at the they same do? time. Oh, as theirs, I don't know. As theirs. But for them, when the almond blossoms come, the next moon that's Passover, like the full moon of that, it would be Passover. Mm -hmm. And I also found it interesting that Aaron's staff was an almond staff. Oh, wow. And his bloomed, you know, and they put it in the ark and all that stuff because it was significant. The blooming of Aaron's staff was how they said, that's who the priest is going to be. That, by that's the way, cool. is found in Numbers 17, 1 through 8. Um, it talks about the how they said, okay, God said write your name on the staff and so they all did so he basically says okay speak to the Israelites and get 12 staffs from them one from the leader of each of the ancestral tribes write the name of each man on his staff on the staff of Levi write Aaron's name for there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe Place them in the tent of meeting in the front of the testimony where I meet with you. The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout, and I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. How cool is that? Yeah. So Moses spoke to the Israelites, and their leaders gave him 12 staffs, and they placed them in the tent, and Aaron's staff was the one that budded, blossomed, and produced almonds. And that's how Aaron became the high priest. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's interesting that Jesus is our high priest, and his appointments, his death, his resurrection, his all that stuff happened on the feast days, and he said, well, this is the beginning. You see my staff budding all around the world. All my almond trees are budding. I'm the high priest. Here I am. Booyah. All the, the things of the feasts, like the barley harvest or the wheat harvest, I'm not a farmer. Mm -hmm. I've never lived, like, this is the countryest place I've ever lived, mm -hmm. and it's the suburbs. I'm in a track home <laughs> in Elk Grove, California. But there's a field, wait a minute, which way? That way, you know, from my house. Mm -hmm. And so every now and again, I'm like, okay, I don't think that's wheat, but something's being harvested right now. Mm -hmm. It's not wheat, is it? It's like hay. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, hay for the horses. We got a lot of cows around here mm -hmm. and horses. <laughs> But it's nice to at least see a little bit of agriculture because I never saw any of that growing up. And then you can think, okay, if you're living in a rural, rural community and you see agriculture all the time, mm -hmm. all of the feasts and all of his calendar comes alive because then you have this, okay, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to be, you know, waving the sheaf of barley like at first fruits. And saying, okay, we're, we're getting ready for the next big harvest coming in. It starts to make a lot more sense of, oh, I see. So God's using 
agriculture as his metaphors for things so that everybody gets it. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to be all shrouded in mystery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was saying, you know, the seed goes in the ground, it comes out a new thing. Look, here I'm going to do the same thing with me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And sooner or later, you're going to be a new thing. I was wondering what feasts are still in existence now that the Jewish people still continue to do because they're probably yeah but they're altered a little right because you have to think about you know um, you know the temple right there's no sacrifices right now yeah so what are the kind there to be so but what are what are the things that they do now especially since okay so you know we look at the temple Uh and then also um, I mean they don't believe in you know Jesus Jesus. right (laughs) yeah so they're still waiting for their Messiah still doing the feasts as if they're still dress rehearsals which a few of them have already had the production signed sealed delivered it's done Mm -hmm. you know all the spring feasts are over Mm -hmm. as far as their fulfillment Mm -hmm. but they're still still doing them Mm -hmm. and that's fine to still do them I think we're supposed to still um, remember them just Mm -hmm. like Jesus said you know every time you drink this cup and eat this bread you know remember me until I come again well he was obviously saying continue with the Passover because that Mm -hmm. was the Passover meal that he did all those things at so he wants us to continue to celebrate the spring feasts as well as the fall feasts Mm -hmm. because of you know as a remembrance I was thinking today Mm -hmm. um, earlier this morning about the Lord's Supper and how we don't really talk about it being relative to Passover. the Passover. Uh-huh. That's kind of sad. It is. <laughs> but I think that, just like I think we mentioned uh, last time, where so much of Judaism was taken out of the church in the Dark Ages and with Martin Luther and with you know Catholicism and how it all went, that we have decided, okay, well, we'll have our Easter and they'll have their Passover and this Lord's Supper thing, they realized, oh no, we're supposed to do that, mm-hmm. but let's not call it Passover because that's Jewish. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. And when they had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink this bread and or eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Mm-hmm. And that um, we mentioned in the study that the cup specifically was the cup of redemption is when he said mm-hmm. that. And that was one of my favorite things in studying the feasts was to know that Jesus said things right when yeah. they mattered. Yes. Like yeah. the, um, you mentioned the bread that of, several times. <laughs> yeah, the bread of life. He said right when it mattered, mm-hmm. and the I'm living water. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know that those were like feast references until I started studying the feasts. Five. Thought they were just Christianese, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah, but their feast terminology. The I'm the living water has to do with when the priests would go at the Feast of Tabernacles and get the water from the pool of Shalom or Salom or. It's not shalom, that's peace, but salom, I think. And if Jen was here, she'd correct me. Um, (laughs) But they bring it, and it was called living water. Mm -hmm. So he said, that's me. Mm -hmm. I'm that. Mm -hmm. I can bubble up out of you just like you took that water and did that. And I don't know, did I mention, too, about the, the priestly garments that were used as wicks? Not in this. Okay, yeah, but you did. You did. You talked That's about the light the of the world um, thing, and that I thought was really cool. Um, That's obviously not in the Bible. That's Jewish um, knowledge, mm-hmm. but that they would use the old priestly garments as the wicks to these huge seventy foot. Oh yeah, you bowls. did mention that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and Jerusalem Christ now is that yeah huge light right. Because you could see, if you think about, like right now, we've got so much light pollution in the world that to say, oh, these huge 70-foot round bowls of light coming out of one city wouldn't necessarily be something that you could see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Mm -hmm. But back then, no light pollution, no whatever, 
all the surrounding nations mm-hmm. could look. I mean, it's not a real hilly place around there except for when you get there. So they're all flat. They're looking up. There's mm-hmm. the light of the world. Jerusalem mm-hmm. is this beacon, this city on a hill. You know, we're told also, don't hide your light. Be a, a city on a hill mm-hmm. with your mm-hmm. with your little light shining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 53. Um, shoot, we could read a lot of it, but if you want, we could just start with five. Isaiah 53, five. Uh, but he... But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Yeah. So that just yeah. refers back to um, him being uh, that unleavened bread right. in the place. That matzah, the pierced mm-hmm. and striped yeah. and broken. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then it goes on with the thing of he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. What about the first fruits? Well, first fruits is always the day after the Sabbath, so it's Sunday. Um, oh, that's the that's the fun part, and we talked about it in the homework. But about um, that the manna, you know, that never spoiled, um, because on the Sabbath the manna doesn't spoil, and Jesus did not spoil or seed decay. And on that Sunday morning, um, he rose and was out of the grave. Mm-hmm. I um, grew up um, thinking, okay, he was in the tomb three days. But that's not really accurate. Mm-hmm. You know, he was only in the tomb for right before the Passover started. They had to put him away because you're not mm-hmm. allowed to touch dead body mm-hmm. during, the during the Passover. And then it's on the third day he rose, as in the first day, you know, put in the whole Sabbath is the second day. Mm-hmm. On the third day, he rose, he rose. So not three nights day. in the grave. Mm-hmm. So that, to me, was like, well, that makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it goes along with and it goes along with yeah. what he planned. Exactly, because it always goes along with what he plans. Oh, and so the, um, the from the, the first Omar. fruits all the way to Pentecost was fifty days. Yes. Okay. That's the counting of the Omer from first fruits to Pentecost. It's 50 days, mm-hmm. um, seven weeks. Okay. And that was the, like I said in the homework, um, maturing, you know, the counting up versus counting down. It wasn't a lift off kind of count, 10, 9, 8, 7. Mm-hmm. They counted up, and that had to do with maturing not only of the harvest, the grain, you know, because it was getting ready to have a harvest, mm-hmm. but also of themselves and getting ready for um well in the new testament getting ready for the holy spirit Mm -hmm. Um, oh mention that point about the three um three thousand or uh, what was it yeah oh yeah because i got papers on that i don't know if it'll be interesting to anybody else but i thought it was interesting because on the first pentecost when the law came down three thousand were killed um it was pretty brutal Moses came down from the mountain, you know, mm-hmm. and they were doing their golden calf nonsense. Mm-hmm. And basically, he's like, I, you people, stiff-necked, you know, <laughs> let's go ahead and wipe some of you out. Mm-hmm. And I think it was the Levites who were appointed to kill them and slaughtered 3,000 of them. And then on Pentecost, 3,000 were saved. Um, so there's this juxtaposition of the, when the law came down, 3,000 died. And when the Spirit came down, 3,000 were added to the number of believers. Mm-hmm. Um, but what That's I, awesome, huh? Yeah. What I found when I was looking up 3,000, because um, numbers are important to God, as we know. Like uh, last week we talked about um, the seven days of the week and seven being the number of completion. We didn't actually talk about that, but that's good to note that um, seven means perfection and completion, and, you know, that's what seven's about. So 3,000, um, I haven't done the, well, what exactly does 3,000 mean? But typically, when it's a multiple of something, mm-hmm. you just go back to the original, well, what did three mean? Three mean, okay. And since three has to do with God as the Trinity, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's a, a God number, you know? Um, 
So often when we see something with three in it, 3,000, even the 300,000, that has to do with, okay, that's a God number. So um, moving into the fall feasts, uh, we've got the Feast of Trumpets, mm -hmm. the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, the first one is obviously the Day of Trumpets, or Feast of Trumpets, um, Yom Teruah. I mentioned all the different um, words that it's called. Um, it has a lot of names. Oh God, now you pronounce those. Say <laughs> them again. Say them? Yeah. If for, I... What's the, for the Feast of Trumpets? Okay, Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, which I think um, basically means the day of blowing, because it's about the trumpets. Mm -hmm. um, there's Rosh Hashanah, which is how we know it just on a Jewish calendar, basically. So even um, our calendars will tell you when Rosh Hashanah is mm -hmm. and when the Day of Atonement is and stuff because they're feast days. They're all on our normal calendars, or at least <coughs> most normal calendars, I think, still tell you, which I think is very helpful because otherwise we'd all have to have Hebrew calendars and be like, yeah, because their months are different. Yes. So Tishri 1, sometimes for us, falls in September, sometimes it falls in October, but it'll say on your calendar, there's Rosh Hashanah right there. Um, granted, it says it on one day where we know from our study and from Hebrew tradition that it's really a two-day festival, and it's the feast where nobody knows the day or the hour oh, okay. of when it starts because it's um, based on the sighting of the new moon. So when they sight the new moon, and back in the old days, they would blow the trumpet, announce there'd have to be two witnesses who see the new moon, and then say, okay, it started, and then everybody would come in, the workers, and they would have the Feast of Trumpets. Mm -hmm. um, this is the same uh, time when David was being hunted by Saul, and Jonathan was like, well, the feast is coming up, you know, come to that, but he didn't show up because he knew that Saul wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the feast of the time when, um, when he was saying, well, the feast is coming, mm -hmm. David will come to that. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. I wanted to read one little thing, um, Hosea 1.9. Okay. It says, Therefore I will take my grain when it ripens and my new wine when it is ready. Um, if you think about um, how things go, we're the grain. Um, there, you know, he talks about the tares and the wheat, you know, and how we'll be divided at the end of the age. Um, that is, that's, oh, I thought I'd put that one. Oh, Matthew thirteen thirty, uh, that we grow together um, until the harvest, and then he separates the wheat from the tares. Okay. And the harvest is when we're taken up and called. Um, but the new wine... Um, if you think about the wrath terminology of treading the grapes and the fall is when the the wine is ripe or the wine the grapes are ripe for making wine and that's when the grape harvest is happening let's move on to talk about um, some of the the argument of what's going to happen at the Feast of Trumpets now um, it is my belief, and obviously I'm in a minority here, but it is my belief that at the same time as Jesus is coming down, we're meeting him in the air, and we come together, and he doesn't actually, you know, we don't stay up there. We meet him and come with him. That's how I see it, because come I Come with him. Down for his second coming. So, you know, um, all the verses of, we'll meet him in the clouds. Mm -hmm. And most people, uh, I shouldn't say most, but it has been uh, the teaching for hundreds of years now, is that we have at least three and a half, and some people say seven years, waiting up in heaven mm -hmm. while the tribulation is going on. and Down here on earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it is the majority view of today that during the tribulation we're already raptured and we're up there and then later we come as the army of heaven um, and I would imagine that maybe the people um, who think that way would go back and say well the feasts are when we're coming with him 
but I'm not exactly sure what they think on that because so I don't. So tell me what your view is. Well, my view is that the fall feasts will all happen in one year, just like the spring feasts all happen in one year. And this is just one theory, but it makes sense to me because that's how the spring feast went. His death, resurrection, and Pentecost um, all happened one year. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the fall feast will also all happen one year. And if you go with the prophetic, um, what the fall feasts mean, well, the Feast of Trumpets has to do with the rapture, the wedding of the church, the coronation of the king, you know, these kind of things. That's happening at the Feast of Trumpets. The Day of Atonement has to do with Christ revealing himself to the Jews. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't read it unless you read extra, um, but the story of Joseph revealing himself to his brothers is a picture of this, and he says, I'm your brother, you know, I'm mm -hmm. Joseph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says um, in different places that the Jews will recognize him, you know, that they'll finally become his when they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The veil will be removed the veil that was put on them, um, if you think back to, I think we talked about uh, Moses being covered with a veil because he was so shiny, mm -hmm. um, and they couldn't look on his radiance, that up until he comes again, there's a veil put on the Jews' hearts, and that they don't even see him as the Messiah mm -hmm. until they say, oh, here he is. And that's when he comes, the veil will be lifted and the Jews will be able to say, oh, you are the Messiah. We see that now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is pictured in the Day of Atonement. And then just that, you know, five days later is the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles, which has to do with him tabernacling with us, starting his rule and his reign here on earth. I am fine with a different point of view because... Quite frankly, I would like to be gone for the tribulation, but I just don't think it's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at, oh, oh, that's a funny one, never mind. We'll go back to that one and have some fun later. But, let's go to John 6, 40. For my Father's will, is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. And what's the reference of the last day? Well, that's the part where you can view it as a different thing, I suppose. Most of the time, when you think of the last day, and I did um, about uh, 10 pages worth of finding all the verses that mention the last day, because the last day is mentioned a lot mm -hmm. um, and typically it goes hand in hand with the day of the Lord so at the coming of the Lord that he will take us um, raise us up that's how I okay do that one and again on the verse 44 no one can come to me unless the father who sent them draws him and I will raise him up at the last day Colossians 3 4 says when Christ, who, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And I don't exactly see how you could say that any other way. Um, 1 John 3, 2 also talks about that when he appears, we'll be like him, because we'll be with him. Mm -hmm. um, and Revelation 3, 1 uh, talks about to the dead church he'll come as a thief versus to the alive church they should know when he's coming mm -hmm. okay. stuff like that um, the day of atonement was always the when the high priest would go into the holy of holies um, the only time of the year that he was allowed in the holy of holies so um, that was the time that they would make the sacrifice for Israel as a nation and if the priest went in and came out alive and everything was well and every now and again he would die in there because it's the Holy of Holies and you better not go in there willy-nilly. You gotta, you gotta be on your A-game, um, all prayed up and clean and pure. They would wash their garments, I think it was seven times, 
that would make sense because seven is the perfection number. Oh yeah, now what do they, did, we, did I ask you that already? What do they do now? You got me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. I know that they intend to do sacrifices again once the temple is rebuilt, but I'm really not sure what they do now on the Day of Atonement. Hmm. I think that it's just the fast. They probably fast and pray. And... Yeah, definitely still fast. Pretty much everything that we talked about today is expanded on more later, except for the Spring Feast. This would be the only week that we talk about Spring Feasts. So. Should we call them prayer? I think we should. Okay. You or me? Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, God, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for your festivals. Um, thank you for speaking to us in a language that we can understand. I hope I have uh, done it justice. Um, I apologize for tripping over what you have made so clear. Um, you, you are our hope and you are our guide. You have given us every little thing to be able to understand um, what's going to happen, what has happened. And I just thank you for opening up to us. Um, open up people's minds to study and reveal your truth to us in new and big ways. Um, I just ask for your blessing over our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah.